Oh, he knocked me over. I'm, I'm out. I go sit in the water. Yeah. <laughs> Hit it, boys. Never from the beginning of an episode have I wanted to be done recording an episode so we can get to frickin' work. I don't oh? know if I censored myself there. I was like, frickin' work. Uh, what are we What are we talking about? Just before we started recording this, someone tweeted out us a picture. I don't know what it is. Oh, it's, yes. uh, oh, it's a Gucci thing. Uh, Lady Gaga and Adam Driver. We're huge fans of Adam Driver's hit song with Oscar Isaac and Justin Timberlake, Please Mr. Kennedy, mm -hmm. off the Inside Lewin Davis soundtrack. Here's what we're thinking, okay? It goes, oh, no, this won't work because this would replace Adam Driver's part. But it would go, please, Mr. Kennedy, ha, ha. Oh, you know that thing she does in... Yeah. Oh, man. That's the, uh, I'll be able to figure something out, but those two are a match made in uh oh heaven. They're also a match made in like weird heaven. Yeah, I would be Lady Gaga. If, well, Lady Gaga can like she she can make the the uh, the the bad guys weird for a weekend. <laughs> she's oh, she's got that touch. I I um. I'm hesitant to like ship anybody with Lady Gaga because people ship her so hard. What does that hard. mean, by the way? Like you root for somebody to get together. Like people ship oh, Ryan oh, Gosling no, and Emma Emma Stone. But I yeah I, I ship that. Yeah, for absolutely sure. Yeah. for sure. Uh, but like people ship Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga like to an insane degree. So I'm very hesitant to ship her with with anybody because I think that she's been shipped to death. Yeah, I would ship her with with uh, with Adam Driver. What a weird thing for people to do. I mean, it's it probably doesn't rank in the, Not top, in the top a thousand right. things people do on the internet, but I mean, it's similar to and people would do that all the time. Like they the, the the stereotypical one over the years would be like, "Oh, I've got somebody great for you. I'm gonna set you up." And yeah. it's like, so you're admitting that you only know two gay people <laughs> or something. Like you're you're just saying like there's. You have this one thing in common, therefore I think you two are perfect. I don't know. People ship people have shipped for each other for like all eternity. Like growing up, people shipped uh like Lauren, Elsie, and uh Kristen and oh, I Steven. Didn't. I didn't. I mean I, I, I shipped You chose I, your team and I by shipped, choosing your team you ship. I shipped Cavils and Steven to be in each other's lives, but not necessarily together. Like okay. I need them to be seeing other people, then get together for a little bit, and just always kind of be in the picture. Just, just keep the, the the memories alive a little bit. Not even the memories, just the contact. <laughs> I need them to be seeing each other in bars and yelling at each other. There's no, we we overrate things, we underrate things, we talk about things uh, that are quote unquote underrated when we really just mean, I like this thing. Yeah. It's probably my I least... like this thing, and I don't get to talk about it as much as I would like to. Or, in more, more realistically, I just found out about this That's thing. That's true. And I want to act like I'm a stan of this thing. So this thing is suddenly underrated. But there's no underrating. There's no over... Or there, there is no overrating Stephen and uh, Cavill's in the bar. There's no right? overrating, Ka there's no uh, overrating their entire dynamic. I know. I don't know what exactly you're talking about in terms of... Steve uh, Van. I don't remember that. Oh, boy, really? Yeah. And actually, you know what? Let me tell you. Maybe there is overrating this because uh, we don't talk like that anymore. There is uh, that, that That is a... That's some... Like, this is how people talked in... When would this have been? 2004, 2005, something like that? Mid-2000s, yeah. Yeah. She she's dancing on the bar and having a time. She's trying to make him jealous, but he's uh, he's dropping some s words on her. Oh oh! And he get it's actually now that I think of it, I'm like oh, I, I don't like that. Two seconds ago, I was like that's my favorite scene in the world <laughs> because like it's just like a, a dude being restrained by his friends who are like okay like you're embarrassing yourself and like you're embarrassing us and like. Those are like second and third on the list because the main thing is like you're kind of screaming at this woman and yeah, everybody can see. Yeah, like there's cameras, uh, the whole nine. What, what's what, do we know? What Stevens up to? 
Uh, I know that Steven at one point was hosting TRL. Well, that is just the most, let's just replace this guy with a guy who looks like this <laughs> yeah. guy. There's they, they have nothing in common other than like nope. they kind of look like each other and have both been on MTV before in unbelievably different roles. <laughs> yes. Uh, by the way, I... I um... Shit, I, it, it makes me feel bad because I want to talk about like what happened to this guy. This is your podcast. That's, talk about it. Uh, yeah, you want to talk about it? You, you know what? To, I will. You know, let, I let, will. Let, let me hook you up. You know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Pete Blackburn. Tell us about it. The guy who used to be. This on is my t- podcast too, by the way. Yeah. I, I wasn't saying like no, like, it's I'm on Pete's <laughs> podcast. I was I was saying like we we you you've got a podcast. No, the guy who is like second in command to Carson Daly on TRL. The guy who is like on the street. Mm. He was in the Britney documentary. Really. Yeah, you, you, what? You oh, watched oh, the oh John Norris. Sure. Is that, is that his name? Dude, John Norris is an internet friend of mine. Is he? Oh, yeah. The guy with the curly hair? Let's let's pull him up. Well, so, like, you you were talking about VJs here, right? Yes. VJs. Yeah, yes. Look up John Norris. John Norris had great pipes. He had, like, intelligent pipes, if that uh, makes sense. This isn't the guy. No, that's not the guy. Uh, I'm talking about... That's the most... The, this guy is like trying to be Kevin some, like, Bacon. Vastly different pictures of John Norris. I oh, this is I know who I know this guy that you're talking about. He is uh yeah, he's he's awesome. Yeah. But not that's not the guy I was talking about. We should um, you know what, buddy? <laughs> while while we've got the pod, we should get John Norris on the show. Hell yeah. He would be a great guest. No, I'm, I'm thinking of the TRL like man on the street. What's his name? I mean, so there was Kurt Loader. I don't think they were sending Kurt Loader on the street though. Kurt was um Kurt was old. <laughs> Remember Kurt Loader? No. <laughs> Look up Kurt Loader. This is if, if this you is incredible. We are going to be dropping uh, pictures of what Pete is looking up into the video episode. So if you are not in the video episode tier of the Patreon, I would get on that right now. What the fuck? It's make, why is it guy on the street? I mean, they would. They had. I mean, they they had Ananda, who was. No, just keep naming names. Well now I know now I'm just thinking of Ananda because let me tell you young DJ young DJ watched TRL p- partially to be like to pick up little factoids about stuff and be like hey see that dance they're doing in the back street back video it's derivative of thriller but they're not it's it's not so much that they'll get sued but it's clearly an homage here's what homage means and like my 11 year old friends hated me but also I watched it because I loved Britney Spears Loved Ananda. You don't remember Ananda? No, I don't. Th- none of these names are ringing a bell. Let's, I'm gonna find this in two freaking seconds. Yeah, you probably seconds. will, and it's gonna make me mad. And uh, Dave Holmes. Oh, Dave Holmes. Dave Holmes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dave Holmes. I feel like we could also get Dave Holmes. He uh, might be. I think is. I think Dave Holmes is a uh, friend of a friend. Is he? Yeah. Okay. I. He's. Uh, he's like a. He came on the Britney Spears documentary. I was like. I fucking love this guy. He was great on MTV. Oh, I could do a whole episode right now uh, the, with no information. I don't about remember how just, we like, got here. What though. happened to the VJs? Where are, not not a, like where are they now? But that was a uh, like you're a top of the world. That was then, like the job to have. Yeah, you hung out with celebrities, all that stuff, and you're not like really hanging out with them. But I'm sure they did hang out with them. But like, you, you were just around pop just music. Vibing constantly yeah. and it was it was really cultivated to be like a big hangout they'd have mm-hmm. people sit up there on the floor and everything they'd bring in dream they would sing uh he loves you not they had giant crowds gather outside like that was what dave holmes's gig he'd be outside with the crowd and you interview the people that didn't actually get into trl that's right i do think though maybe they start to cut back or something but they just would throw it down to some to some they'd be like hey all right, now let's go downstairs to uh, Pete. He wants to give people a shout out, and you're like, and you just you were just there, and no one was supervising you or anything, but like you had an MTV mic, and you were just a fan, and you were like, "Freak on leash by Core is the greatest music video ever." <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I want to say what up to DJ, blah, blah, watch media represent. Okay, what up? And like that was it. And I remember at one point, it was over the years. I was like, "Who's like watching them? Yeah, how are they getting away with this? Yeah, yeah." Um, how do we get here? Are we talking about uh, Stephen Coletti being on TRL? Yeah. So Wait, I, how do we get to Dave Holmes? He was also on TRL That's because true. you said the guy on the street was in the Britney Spears documentary. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which we all agree. 
Yeah, he was. Not that good, that, oh, that documentary. Sp- people loved it for like a week, and then they forgot about it. They loved it we talked because they love Britney Spears, right. and it like it made us sad for Britney and everything, but it, it just so wasn't, it wasn't revelatory. Yeah, I think that people were more just like excited that the, the movement was getting some traction, Hell maybe. Yeah. Um, and that I can get behind, but the, the documentary itself was just like, all it did was help me realize like what a, uh, conservatorship, whatever. Conservatorship. You, yeah, yeah. That help me understand what that is. Yeah. And even then I'll tell you, I, I still don't uh, totally get that, but I'm, uh, I'm very much rooting for Brittany. We were just talking before we fired up here. We we're like, man, the Grammys are in a few days. And I know that we've gotten more and more off the grammys over the years but i don't care at all about this no definitely not i don't care at all the only thing i care about is i will be i'm going to be very upset if taylor wins album of the year because that's just so not a i was going through album to make myself feel better i was going through album of the year winners to be like good albums don't always win album of the year but i i'll tell you most of the time they do. When you go through album of the year winners, you're like, man, that's a great album. That's a real, like, man, like, I remember when the Suburbs Arcade Fire won. I think I was rooting for Gaga or something like that. It sounds like something I would do. But, like, I look back and I'm like, that is a classic. That's a yeah, great so you album. Yeah, so you can't necessarily, like, say, like, this album didn't deserve to win. Like, every ar- album that wins, like, at least has an argument. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And even we talked recently about, uh, shit, what was that, uh, what was that quartet? The, uh, the, the French quartet that won, uh, I think they won in 2013. No. French quartet. It was, uh, the guy who sings the, from the Dana to the Phoenix, and then it has oh, uh, Daft Pharrell's Punk. in the group. Yeah, it's Daft Punk. And there's two the other famous, guys. The famous quartet. Famous quartet. Do you know that Ben Folds 5 was a trio? You you say this joke all the time. I think this is like an, an OG brunch joke. That's true, though. Yeah. I was actually thinking of debuting a you know, segment Maroon on 5 this. is just Adam Levine and like... <laughs> Four fake people that he carries around. Apparent, according to Adam. Levine, yeah, no shit. Quote? <laughs> yeah. He was like, "Bands, what happened dead. to bands, bro? Like, ba- yeah, what happened to your band that was awesome? And then you yeah. were just decided to get tattoos and be the biggest douche in Hollywood. Yeah, we've probably discussed that move a lot. We, have. I can never really get mad at him for it. I think it's just such a business decision, and he's so much hotter now." Like maybe not now. Like I don't know if like I who who knows if Adam yeah, Levine's hot right now. But he's not because. But like when he got he, all those tattoos, it was like, uh, well, but, you're definitely hotter. But yes, but he also got those tattoos because he was like, I'm gonna be so much hotter. Yeah. He didn't get those tattoos because he was like, I'm a tattoo guy. He was like, I need to be a sex symbol, so he just covered his body in tattoos. But that's true with everything. Why do you think I got this tattoo? But he man? probably he, he knew that I was Adam going Levine for, definitely I was going googled for like sexiness points. Adam Levine definitely like googled sexy tattoos and just printed them out, and brought them to his tattoo parlor, and was like, "Put these on me. I need to be sexy." I think I know. I I don't think Jared Krabis would be offended if uh, he heard me say I think he did that too. Probably, like I, yeah. I think a lot of people, like I, I know a lot of people, and people who I like, I think Jared looks unbelievable with tattoos. I bet that was a. But I do know Jared's this makes tattoos. me more attractive. Yeah. Move. Yeah, but I, but I also know that like Jared's tattoos, some of them have meaning and stuff. Well, what do you, what do you think the rule is for if you're getting a sleeve? What percentage of the tattoo? Because I, I sometimes I will peep someone's tattoos, and I'll just be like, that part is just clearly like, <laughs> filler. It's, uh, it's. It's it's sleeveish. That looks like it's like sleeve material. Well, I th- I think that if you're getting a sleeve, and I've thought about it, I I still am like considering getting a sleeve. I'm gonna weigh in after that. Okay, go ahead. Um, I I think that you have to build it around something, and then you can add filler, sleeve filler. Yeah, because I I think that a lot of sleeves look bad when people try to put too much on it, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that a lot of people just like think. Uh, like I need to fill up my entire arm, so I got to come up with a million ideas. I think that sleeve filler is good because it makes the sleeve look like a sleeve. I have no idea what to do with this Pete sleeve thing because in, even as you were talking, I changed my mind about my thought on you getting <laughs> okay. a sleeve. I was going to say, don't get a sleeve. I was going to say you would look. I think like I think you would look good with a sleeve and like a buzz cut. 
I think that would look really good on your body, your frame. But I think that certain lengths of hair or certain certain styles you might wear, that was a bar, uh, could look better or worse without a sleeve. I think some... But I think that that's also just like an inherent risk of getting a sleeve. Like a sleeve doesn't necessarily always look good. Yeah. But I don't know. I th- I'm not really worried about. Yeah. About like. Like, is it going to be? Know, is it going to match uh-huh. with my hair? Right. My hair right now, by the way, is just fucking wild. I'm a fan of it. I mean, so I I know the the thing you have going on with your hair right now. Mm-hmm. Very familiar with it. It's showered, no product, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Someone won't say who was hating on it. Mm-hmm. The, you're gonna get like fifty fifty results with that, like from talking to people. I'm fine with that. That's a that's a it's a big growing pain from with having long hair. But once you get to the point where you're like, it's going to look different every day. Yeah. And people for some reason really want to be all up in my business about it. Then it feels great. Uh, by the way, if you uh, if you're subscribing to our Patreon, you can watch this on video. You can see my hair. That's true. Uh, and and how? Let's not describe wild. it anymore. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's called a tease. Uh, I have a question. Mm-hmm. When you when you have long hair and you shower, yeah. Uh, how much hair like comes out? So much. Really? Yes. You, okay. you, you're probably losing tons and you're freaking out. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I panic. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it's tons. I think they say like it's that not you... like clumps and stuff, but like there's. No, I'll run there's... my hands through my hair and it'll be like yes. like four or five Definitely. strings. That's normal. Okay, great. or that that's at least what what happens to me. All right. Well, you still get you still have the strong hairline. I was worrying that like my hair was going. Yeah, it isn't. Um, okay, cool. I uh, it doesn't look like it right now, but the other day, Chaboy was looking hella oscar isaac in inside lewin davis this is an inside lewin davis episode Hell because yeah. we're just making references but like people have been uh, asking for the cohen brothers week by the way really <laughs> yes we'll do it i mean we're 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 say yes people someone asked for uh a an nhl playoffs preview right now which i thought about they were like can you do an nhl playoffs preview and i was like that'd be funny if we just made the next Mid-season. episode <laughs> yeah. a, uh, an nhl playoffs preview but yeah dude you're good with the hair okay cool don't worry um Let's. We do have a gum update, thanks to Patreon. Do we want to? The gum update is that you're fucking obsessed with gum and giving updates on it. No, these these are these are unsolicited gum updates. In fact, you know what? Uh, shout out the Wash Media family. I dipped my toe in the Discord. Yeah, I saw. And I monitored. You monitored? Yeah. You just made made sure I was everybody ma- was making sure you were safe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's a Discord, and I got in there. Initially, first, f- the first thing someone said was, uh, hi, welcome. Say something nice about yourself. I was all in on the Discord. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is great. Because really my experience with the whole Washed gang so far is that similar to us, uh, like PG vibes with the occasional swear that makes it PG-13. Mm-hmm. That is just so my speed. I love it. And I got into the Discord uh someone made a little raunchy comment and i said hey i'm here for pg stuff like we're 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 a pg podcast with occasional swear blah blah i gave the whole spiel i said i was like my sense so far is that washed is uh like pg vibes am i right and someone said yes but be warned this is an HBO Discord. <laughs> oh God! Uh, that was hilarious. They could have uh, gone with like PG thirteen. They could have gone with R. R. But HBO is like a very good. That way is to very good. It's like we're just gonna throw in boobs because we vibes. can. Right, right, right. Just like uh, it, it, it'll be, it'll be a little, well, quite a bit raunchier. Well, than... we're gonna, we're gonna just remind you that we're HBO and that we have different sets of rules. Right. Um. Did somebody ask you about your balls? So that was the thing that okay. I was like, hey. I guess that's n- like a running doing, bit. Not, okay. Like, as soon as somebody joins the Discord, they ask them about their balls. They also, they're big on saying, uh, earning business? I yes, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that might be a wash thing, because, uh, like, Brett yeah. was like, hey, we got this new podcast. Give him a shot to earn your business. I'll tell you what, they were, they made a little uh, brunch uh, Discord sub-channel thing mm-hmm. at my despite my request not to they were like oh hey welcome we'll make a brunch thing and i was like no 
I want you texted me and you were like, less of everything. They want to I make like, a brunch I, Discord. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm saying no. What's the code? What's the code? What, <laughs> you like, know how to say I, Discord. You know, what, what do I put in here to, to block it? I was like, dude, just let them. Yeah. So they started, and I'll tell you what, it's ex- it is entirely brunch vibes in there. Perfect. It's, I, I think there's some brunch touchables in there, like keeping an eye on it. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I answered some questions. People asked for some episode recs. There were already people in there checking out old episodes saying, hey, these are the ones that I've liked so far. So um, new listen. I mean, I guess if you're if you're a washed person checking us out, you probably already know about that discord. But uh, so far, the washed discord is endorsed. Uh, This is what someone told me on the wash discord about gum. Fun fact. Chewing gum actually or gum chewing has decreased a lot over the years since people have smartphones and they look at their phones in the checkout aisle instead of being tempted to buy the small stuff they have there. That hmm. kind of sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah. I I feel like there's got there's got to be like a, a bunch of different things that have chipped away at, at like gum culture. Yeah. But that does make sense. Yeah, right? I never even look I like I used to always just stare at like the the checkout aisle stuff and be like do I need a Snickers bar right now? Do I need a Snickers bar right now? And now I don't even think I notice that stuff because I'm on my phone. Well, are the people that you're with being super judgmental to you? Because the commercials tell me <laughs> true. that that might suggest to you. no one is meaner to anybody than the friends of somebody who needs a Snickers. <laughs> yeah, uh, Snickers is entirely funded by bullying friends. Oh, totally. You finally saw Hook, so we're going to be talking about bullying out the wazoo. Oh, yeah. Uh, but first, I'll say um, there were a lot of good uh, gum <laughs> gum observations, uh, testimonials. We got a lot of testimonials on the Patreon, people t- telling us about their gum experience over the last year as we check uh, whether or not stonks may or may not be going up or down on, on gum. And most of the people said... That they're still chewing, that like was a gum chewer, am a gum chewer. Huh. Keep it on. The people were saying, I keep it on in the mask. Although one person said they had to stop, they stopped chewing gum because the mask of going down because they feel like an asshole taking off their mask to take out gum once it loses its flavor. We were getting mileage out of gum, dude. Huh. Interesting. I, I, I thought that the stonks would be up on gum because of the masks and like people just wanting to keep that. Keep that circulating air, yeah, that nice in there. But I don't know. I mean, like, y- you can find a second to pull down the mask and throw the gum away. I mean, I, I feel like a. I don't know if I feel like an asshole, but like, I-, I, I wonder if I'm not supposed to be drinking water at the gym, yeah, because I have to like pull down the mask, drink the water, and then put it back up. But like, what am I supposed to do? Not drink water the entire time I'm at the gym? That seems bad. No, no, you got to be hitting water frequently. Right. I've been doing, yeah, spin class. I do after every song. I do okay. a little bit, a bit of water. You just pull down the mask, drink, and then yeah. put it back up? Okay. Sometimes I'll do a wipe of the... Uh, I'll tell you what. The beard plus mask plus sweat. Horrible. Possibly the worst time. Awful Couldn't time. Couldn't be me, but... Tell you what's a good time. Supporting us on Patreon. $2 gets you our friendship. $5 gets you bonus video episodes and access to our voicemail. And $10 gets you everything plus discounts on all merch patreon.com slash listen to brunch this week's bonus episode will be out friday but there's also more coming because monday we will bring back the legendary brunch segment the fan favorite really just our favorite i just think the uh, the the, when we describe what this segment is i think like my biggest selling point is i really like saying the name of it Mm -hmm. we'll be bringing back it's monday and people are pissed which is just us talking. It's on a Monday. We talk about something that uh, people are pissed about. And it's always something that people probably should not spend their energy being pissed about. Right. Well, I mean, like, I mean, it, it, everybody who, who is listening to this is on the Internet. And you know that people get pissed over stupid reasons. Right. So uh, every Monday we're going to be having a chat about what's uh, what's grinding people's gears. Never our gears. Never our gears. Yeah. We're just we're just laughing at them. Right. So. The, the big one, what, someone was so they oh they were mad that uh, they made LeFou, uh in um, in Beauty and the Beast. People were mad because they made LeFou's character gay. 
which like it goes without saying what kind of a loser gets worked up about that and also is like the candle holder no lefou is uh gaston's um like sidekick slash stalker oh it's like just like watch the first yeah right watch the original yeah. I, I i i don't think i don't think it's the, really the, striking yeah, anybody yeah i don't think the i don't think the, the new disney people are doing anything i think that <laughs> they're it, connecting the dots and being more upfront about it right god for right and i don't want to get worked up about it but like <laughs> god forbid you know um so it's yeah we talk we find a topic where people are being stupid um I'll tell you, like it's the, the Phoebe Bridgers guitar smash attempt. Oh would have yes, been, that would have been a perfect. That one. would have been perfect. But I, but we're kind of trying to make it not super stressful because these days the it's Monday and getting and people are pissed. Things are like so, legitimately so aggravating re- things. It's, right, uh, we're like, gonna stay away like from ups- that stuff. Yes. That, that stuff that that makes us pissed because right. other people are pissed. So we're just going to try to have fun with it. Um, yeah. The uh, By the way, thanks to everybody. So uh, a nice little uptick in the Patreon. So thank you to everybody who kind of jumped in immediately, supported us. Thank Very much so appreciate much. you. Yeah. We're, um, we've are we got goals for the Patreon. We're almost, kind of almost. We've got goals We're kind different of area codes. That's right. We're kind of almost halfway to the sleepover stream, which we really, really want to do. So patreon.com, listen to brunch, please get on there. Um we uh the the it's Monday and people are pissed stream, that's not gonna be like uh you gotta pay for it or anything. That's just a, an extra thing that we're doing, but um it'll be if on, you wanna be on Twitch, I think. Um yeah. I we're still kind of uh deciding. Just but the- I do believe that our our goal is to set up a, a brunch Twitch. Yeah, and yeah. start doing stuff from there. So, um, if we don't get that done by Monday, it'll probably just be on on mine or yours. We'll figure something out. Um, but I'm assuming that it's going to be on Twitch. Yeah. So um, that'll just be a that'll be like a, a freebie watchable thing. But if you like it and uh, you want to support uh, the stuff as we uh, as we throw it at you, Patreon.com/slash Listen to Brunch. Uh, us joining the Wash Network does mean that we are back two ads as amy winehouse once famously sang back in ads back to you know you're not a music guy not a music you're not guy. even getting these references it's right over my head back to black is a uh, i didn't know that yeah that's one of her albums right yeah and then i just said back in ads but that was just so that was such a bad attempt at, at <laughs> it's a home run you could have just like said like back it has the same effect as like back to school. No, black. Is it- um, black is a near rhyme of ads. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It yes, it has the same black it, ads. Are you serious? It, it has the. I don't know what the exact word, but it's like it a type a. of rhyme. Right. Ah, no, it has that ah sound. Okay. It's right. got that ah sound. You nailed sound. it. You're right. You nailed it. All right. Uh, well, do we do you, uh, do we have the read? Uh, okay. Um. Today's episode is brought to you by Porches. Spring is here, and what better time to install a new porch from Porches? With made-to-order designs to fit any budget, Porches will help you design your dream porch. Here's something I bet you didn't know. Uh, A porch with a fire pit not only makes your house the best on the block, it greatly adds to the overall value of your home. In just one day, Porches can install a brand new fire pit for your porch. Not interested in a fire pit? Porches can make you chairs, nice ones too, that will go great on your porch. From handcrafted low-sitting wooden chairs to those plastic white ones you get at Home Depot, Porches has a chair for every occasion. Don't need a chair? Your funeral. Porches has a pretty decent wind chime selection too. And if you're giving one as a gift, Porches wind chimes ship with a ton of paper wrapped around the tubes and the clapper so it won't make any noise before they open it. No porch is complete without a couple of short glass tables where you can put plants. In addition to three standard sizes in stock, porches can custom make you a set of those short glass tables where you can put plants in colors ranging from white metal with a glass top to brown metal with a glass top and green metal with a glass top. Thinking of freshening up your existing porch? Porches has that plastic stuff that looks like wood but doesn't soak up water or splinter. Porches technicians will lay it down and drill it in just like they would with wood but it will serve as a more versatile and practical base for your porch. Skimped on the fire pit and fake wood? 
It's screen season. Limit the damage done by Mother Nature and stay a little bit warmer on your porch with a screen custom cut by porches. You'll still be able to sit on your porch and enjoy those spring nights with those tiny little wires blocking some of the cold from getting all the way inside your porch. With porches, you can always show your true colors. Porches has flagpoles and flagpole holders so that you'll always feel at home on your porch. A bathroom on a porch? It's been done before. Porches will visit your home, size up your porch, and see if maybe there's room for a toilet on that bad boy. You'll never have to run back into the house in the middle of a porch session again. Especially if you have a mini fridge that blends into the rest of the porch. Porches will custom install a mini fridge made from 100% plastic stuff that looks like wood. So you can always keep your favorite porch beverages cold. Winter has come and gone, which means Porches is having its annual inflatable Minions lawn decoration <laughs> for sale. If you're looking if you're looking to buy hundreds of inflatable characters from the movies t- <laughs> Despicable Me, Despicable Me 2, Minions, Despicable Me 3 and the upcoming Minions: The Rise of Gru, Porches has tons of back stock and everything must go. Get a Porches change <laughs> Get a Porches Chain for Life membership and you'll get unlimited chains for holding up those swinging benches that are on porches. <laughs> the Chain for Life Club also includes unlimited hooks with screws on the other side that will drill cleanly into both wood and the plastic stuff that looks like wood. Why do so many people take good care of things like their house and lawn while totally overlooking their porches? If you need a cool sign to put on your porch, Porches has a sign for every mood. Having a sign on your porch that says, home is where the porch is, or take your porch on the road with a, my other car car is a porch bumper sticker. (laughs) Planning on an outdoor movie night? Porches offers pretty good projectors and screens that will let you watch your favorite movie or game right from your porch. Ooh, I'm a rebel for the kickstand because your neighbors will call you Portugal the man. Trek out your porch. (laughs) Trick out your porch with porches. Use promo code BRUNCH for unlimited tips on how to upgrade your porch today. Thanks to Brett for uh, getting us. Yeah, appreciate it, Brett. Big time read. Bag secured. Also, uh, we've done porches reads in the past, but uh, their new copy is is much better. Yeah, they uh, made some adjustments. Right. It's no longer. It's no longer fall. (laughs) That's right. So it seems I, I think they may have been able to unload those pumpkins. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that they just had millions of pumpkins. <laughs> yeah, just, they were just pumpkins all over the place. Were, no room for any inventory. But this when they get rid of the pumpkins, the next thing you know, you got despicable minions. Me. <laughs> that seems horrible. <laughs> that place is that, that warehouse is gonna be a disaster. Although it is smart, it's like getting I don't know, it's like getting. A uh, an Antoine Walker jersey and holding on to it for a while, That's and right. then eventually Minions they get always Kemba come back Walker. In right, so Minion. I had to look this up after we got this copy, but um, Minions: The Rise of Gru isn't out yet. Crazy delayed. So if you get that back stock, if you get if you get those Minions, you're gonna have that before Rise of Gru even comes out. Minions: Rise of Gru got delayed more than Tenet. Wild. Yeah. Did you see Tenet? No. Is that out yet? Yeah. It just, came, it just came out like recently. No, like like months ago. Yeah, it I just, just kind of like flew by. I like uh, Dunkirk. The ships were real. They. Oh out. man, they... Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper, handshake Dunkirk. Oh, the, the ship ships is are real. real. <laughs> yes, absolutely love it. Um, no, I just meant Dunkirk. Flying around, right? That's uh, Tom. Does Tom Hardy yeah. go for a uh, fly in that one? Yeah, yeah. That movie's not that good. I love that movie. Fuck off. I think that may have been like a. I was really excited about it. We were we were pretty um apart on our reviews. Okay, that like, was I, first, I thought it was that fine. Was the inaugural brunch does the Oscars Ooh. hardcore. Oh, season. cool, cool. Um, but yeah, I uh, I loved it the second time. Okay, well, I'm very excited because you saw Hook. And we've already talked about some stuff already on this podcast, so maybe we're just edit all that stupid stuff out because the crux of this episode is that you saw Hook, and we should have a proper Hook episode because the, what a 
what a legendary, important movie, 1990-whatever, Steven Spielberg, John Williams, I believe Robin it was 91. Williams. I think it was 91, too. Which, 91, man, I was going to say, like, that was, like, that a lot of movies that I saw when I was a kid came out in 91. You're two years old. I, w- I would be three, yeah. But, so, just, like, movies that had been around for a couple of years yeah. when I s- saw them. So, that makes sense. But, uh, what did you think of Hook? What uh, just an absolute treasure chest of just nonsense. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Um, first... I guess it wasn't the first observation, but I, I, I watched 50 minutes of Hook, and I was like, they haven't really gotten anywhere. Mm. So I hit the pause button real quick. Two hours and 24 minutes? Yeah. What the fuck? It's a lot. It's it's a, it's a Spielberg movie. Yeah, but it's, a, it's Captain Hook. You know what the craziest thing about Steven Spielberg is? I thought he's like a fake director. Well, then it's that. I didn't know that. If he's a fake director, then that's the most, that's the craziest thing about him. I would say that, like, someone, th- th- this movie Jaws comes out where people are like, hey, I hope a shark doesn't eat us. And everyone was like, who is this director? <laughs> he is going to be in charge of everything. The most high stakes, high profile, high budget projects go to this guy, the, the guy that talks about. Hey, look! The size of this boat is not sufficient. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly didn't even i I didn't even know that Spielberg was was the Jaws guy. I looked. I was like, "What got Spielberg going?" And in my head, I was like, "I feel like it's Jaws." And then I looked it up. It was Jaws. Really? Uh, yeah. So, so I say Spielberg's like a fake director because like he's just so big and like all encompassing at this point that. And, like, his rise came when I was a kid and didn't obviously, like, didn't care or pay attention. But I just felt like he did every movie. So he seems like a fake director. Well, a fake director is perfect for this movie because I realized this as I was re-watching it. This movie has a lot of... You don't necessarily know this thing exists, but you just kind of have to go with it. You just like that. They'll do something and they'll reference something and you'll be like, well, this just must be Peter Pan folklore that I don't totally understand. Mm -hmm. And when you see it for the first time as a kid, you're absolutely down to go along with that because a kid is a person who doesn't know anything. Right. So like you don't have it. So when I watched it, when I was a kid, I was like, Oh yeah. Sometimes you also call a a thimble a kiss. Like that's a (laughs) thing. And then like I was watching it yesterday. I was like, that doesn't really make sense to me. The, do we, do we know that Peter Pan crows? Is that a no. thing? Yeah, that was weird. Him and the uh, the guy with the red hair, the red streaks, him just like crowing together. Do you not know his name? Uh, Jeffrey. Rufio. Rufio, that's I right. I was going to go. Well, I'm glad I didn't do it. I was going to start this episode with a uh, with a uh, cameo from Dante Basco, Is the actor who played him, being like, I think that's his name. Is it uh, Dante? I don't think anybody knows. Yeah, Dante Basco. Yeah, he was... Being like, hey, Pete, heard you saw, uh, <laughs> heard you saw, Hook for the first time. But we're in a bit of a cameo timeout. I thought it would have been worth it though. You would have been pretty mad that we just constantly. <laughs> How much does does he charge for cameo? It was uh, it was like a hundred bucks, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thought about it. Yeah, it wouldn't have been that thrilled. I st- <laughs> yeah, I, I, maybe I'll still do it in the future. Uh, Patreon.com slash listen to, to brunch. Hit those. I uh, hit the, the the ten dollar one so we can get uh, Dante Basco on. Yeah, he's Rufio. He's such a legend. But I also realized when I was rewatching it, like he's not as maybe. I don't know. What, what were your thoughts on Rufio? He's just kind of a dick. You, you forgot his name, so you yeah. really don't care about him. He was a dick, and then like they just. Gave him a redemption arc. So everyone's trying to help Peter find his way, remember everything. And at the same time, Rufio is uh, like trying to kill him. Yes. Like, l- like not even like, not even be mean to him. He's literally just trying to, d- to murder the him. The coconut scene, I yeah. was like, I gasped. I was like, oh my God. So much of it was, I forgot all about this. But uh, we'll, we can give a quick little rundown. Peter Banning is a workaholic lawyer who at the end of the movie Captain Hook tells him he's a alcoholic too but like we don't really see that in the movie so we just kind of have to take Captain Hook's word for it but uh he's a workaholic uh doesn't like doing anything but working misses his kids baseball games he goes to visit his uh 
Baseball is a huge part of this movie. We will okay. certainly get to that. Visit uh, the uh, woman who basically adopted him and like gave him a uh, life. Uh, that this woman is Wendy Darling, the girl from Peter Pan. That at least you can kind of put together. And uh, he goes to a weird ceremony, and they kidnap his kids. So then he has to go to Neverland, and Julia Roberts uh, brings him there. It's one of two times Tinkerbell straight up kidnaps him. And then he has to hang out with the Lost Boys and fight Captain Hook in a big fight where uh, if you fall down, you're just out of the fight. <laughs> only one. But you notice know, only two people die in that fight. Uh, and then, like, yeah. this war they That's have. That's true. I was like, oh, this is a lot of, oh, he knocked me over. I'm, I'm out. I go sit in the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And then it, the, the juxtaposition of like, oh, I'm out of the fight is hilarious. Because like you said, if you fall down, people just check check themselves out. Yeah. And then there are other people that are just actually dying. Uh, you said it's two hours and 24 minutes long, whatever it is. Two hours, how, however long. There is only one scene they could cut. And I like that Steven Spielberg was like, no. Uh, there's a weird kind of sex scene in this movie where he falls in the water, Peter Pan. The, the mermaid orgy. And one by one, three mermaids come over and give him mouth to mouth. And it's just got very sex scene vibes. Yes, very fucking weird. Uh, there were a few moments in this movie where, like, R Peter Benning smooching some people that like maybe his wife wants Ava to ask some questions once yeah. he returns yeah nev campbell and madman i uh i don't think or if i were your if i were your wife i wouldn't be happy with this yeah. kind of vibes you smooches three mermaids in mm. in some underwater orgy also smooches tinkerbell at one point he does this movie by the way uh nominated for uh Biggest waste of Julia Roberts in a motion picture. I, I felt so bad all of her scenes. I'm like, yo, that's Julia Roberts. Right. So I literally, when Julia Roberts showed up and was Tinkerbell, I gasped. Really? Because, number one, when she was when she's small, you can't really tell You're who like, it is. And they, that, they, she's way, that's way too small for Julia Roberts. Right? She's, <laughs> she's way bigger than how this. How big are all of these other people? <laughs> Uh, and also, they I, I don't know if they messed with her voice, but or if she was just so young that her voice sounds so different, yeah. or if they messed with it because like she's small and they made it mm. squeakier, but it didn't sound like Julia Roberts at all. And I was just like, Julia Roberts is too good for this. You, but you were, was she in '91? Maybe you were like, is Julia Roberts that small, or did Jack just never stop growing? Yeah, that was Robin question. Williams. Remember, have you seen that movie? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? He uh, grows too much? Yeah. You don't. You would have been cracking up if you got that. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, thank God. No, I mean, I feel one? terrible for you I, that you I, look at that. He was in a movie called Jack where every year he ages five years. Something like that. Oh, no. I've, yeah, I, I know that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So actually, like, Rob Williams was in a lot of movies Jack, where though. he's just like hanging out with kids. Yeah, it's weird. And which, Patch Adams. Patch Adams, which like uh, the like obviously not saying like they were problematic movies or anything, but like that is well that like Robin Williams' per, style right. of yeah. humor is like he's very goofy and kids love it. Oh, I mean he was perfect as a lost boy. When they're I I love the scene when they're shooting the eggs at the pirates mm -hmm. and he's like clucking mm -hmm. and he he does like a really good like. <laughs> <laughs> he was. You man, think that was the audition? We got to hear. Yes, you, yeah. When the, when they had Robin Williams audition for this movie. They're like, we need an extremely eccentric uh, person to play Peter Pan, and we don't know who Jim Carrey is yet. <laughs> uh, Robin Williams, you're going to have to come in and audition for this one. Sorry, buddy. He was, man, he was, he is one of those actors, though. Like, you watch stuff he's in, you're like, only he could yeah, do this. Yeah, pretty much. He was, he was a real fucking legend. Uh, My first note on this movie is... Uh... Where does this? Where do they live? Because they they have a winter baseball tournament, and it seems like people are cold at the tournament. Oh, interesting! It's called the Santa series. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's pretty dope. The uh, the the umpire was wearing a Santa beard and like Santa hat. I love. I just love the music when they transition to the baseball game. The score of this movie is like great. All the pirate stuff is great, but there's like this real kind of like 
but a ding 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 but it ding ding but ding ding like it's like very not baseball-y but they're playing that while jack's up to bat the saddest scene in the movie is in the baseball scene though uh which one? The, the there non-pirate. are multiple there right. are multiple baseball scenes so the little league baseball scene he's at bat and he's looking at the st- in the stands and he doesn't see his dad he's just looking for his dad looking for his dad he's so disappointed then he looks at his coach and his coach is like, "Don't look at me! Don't look at me! <laughs> what are you? I'm not your dad, yeah, right? Basically, right? Like, ah, I'm not going to be the man in your life. <laughs> you can't. Also, they're like, uh, she, uh, the mother's like, please not a curveball, please not a curveball. I'm like, I hope not a curveball. They're like four yeah, years old. Who's the kill themselves out there? No, the uh, the that happens in the in the pirate baseball scene where where uh, uh, Peter Pan is like." He can't hit the curve. Yeah, they, uh, they like, don't throw the curve for an absentee father. <laughs> sure knows a lot about like what his son's hot and cold zones in the <laughs> right, strike zone. Right. Are. He knows what he his... has been watching the film though. Uh, he has his his employees show up at the field, and the mom asks no questions when a guy when an adult man shows up with a video camera and goes, "Which one's your son? I'm here to film him." Yeah, <laughs> no questions asked. Uh, there is a th- let's talk about the other baseball scene. So. The uh, base runner tries to steal second and is gunned down. I just realized that as I said that, that like that's what they were going for. Yes. Maybe, possibly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a joke on like, yeah. But no, but do you think like, like the, 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 down, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, so he's gunned down, stealing second. Ridiculous scene. Uh, and I, I also Hook says, he's like, no, 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 that's not how you do it. Now continue the game. <laughs> and it's like, you should tell them how to do it then. Like, they're shooting each other to death. I would clarify. Like, don't they could be like, oh, we're supposed to shoot them a different way or something. Yeah, but uh, Hook doesn't necessarily care about accidental deaths because that was one of the moments where I, like, you popped in my head because you always get hung up on, like, that guy Th- that was just guy doing just... his day. Right, yeah. Uh, Hook had one of those moments when uh, when Robin Williams pulls out his checkbook, he's like, "How much money do you want yeah. for me to?" And Hook shoots the checkbook. It goes through the checkbook and kills one of his own men. That's true. So uh, that was the first one that I was like, "Oh man, this must have killed DJ." I'll tell you what: in Hook preparing for a war with uh, with Peter Pan and the Lost Boys, he kills three of his men. Right, Boo Box guy. Yep. Uh, Bubox guy, guy doubted him though, so not a, not a real warrior. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and the baseball guy in the actual war, only they only take out <laughs> one lost boy. <laughs> That's right. So in their preparation, three hundred percent more killing, <laughs> it, it, just from practicing and not even practicing. Those guys like weren't you? They were just standing around. They got shot. Maybe maybe they do that to uh, to prepare the rest of the men for the emotional toll mm. that comes with. Uh, an occasional death in a war. There are hella cameos in this movie. Crazy I saw announce. you tweet about one. There's one. So th- I think there's four. Let me see if. So you saw me tweet about one, which was uh, one of the pirates is uh, music legend and controversial Twitter presence, David Crosby. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Which is really right. You still that's, don't know who David Crosby is. That's the Crosby is. Stills Nash. Yes, you know, right. Other fellow. So that was random as hell, but I was watching. Is he I was the like, one that hates Phoebe Bridgers? No, he just said it was stupid. He, okay, he well, hates he, when he's, people smash their guitars. Well, he, he's the one who hates everything. Right, yes, yes. And so he had a problem with Phoebe Bridgers. Got well, it. Well, just someone said, what do you think of her smashing her guitar? And he said, like, stupid, stupid or, yeah. like, pathetic, don't smash your guitars. And then she called him uh the b word uh so that's david crosby but that's not a big one that's not gonna mean much to you you probably saw nope. young wendy young wendy uh who yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. uh that was gwyneth paltrow gwyneth paltrow who maybe maybe cameo would be a stretch because that gwyneth paltrow couldn't have been a thing yet right maybe i, I don't know was Emma? I never saw that movie, but she she might have been really young for that one. Maybe I don't know. But when Gwyneth Paltrow showed up, I was like, "Oh damn!" Like, yeah, we're using bullets for this. No, no pun intended. No right. the baseball field. Right. No, no baseball. But yeah, okay, no baseball talk. Now this one is really gonna uh, blow your mind because, and this will help for the people watching it on video. So 
this that's that's David Crosby, but you don't really know what he looks like. Mm-hmm. Who is this? Who? The detective. It's the, the one standing up. Yep. The ins- when they're looking for the kids, they're saying, "Who is the?" I mean, I don't know. That's a tough picture to 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 determine. But can you tell from maybe the hairline? Did you zoom? Is it Frank Sabaka? No. Okay. It Damn. is a- also a musician. Let me see. Hold on. Ah, son of. Very famous musician. David Bowie. No. <laughs> okay. It doesn't look anything like David Bowie. It's, Who is it? It's Flea. No. <laughs> uh, that is Phil Collins. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Would you say that th- did that blow your mind? Yeah. Maybe a little bit? Yeah. Like on that's the scale? incredible. Okay. Also, did isn't does Phil is Phil, Phil Collins is uh, Irish, right? No, he's English. Is he? Okay. Uh, I think he might be, could he be from I think he, Wales. I, th- I think that he has, has like a Irish. He does have a distinct accent. I think he could be from. Uh, he's from London. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. So. That's that's, in, that's that's very shocking. That blew your mind pretty strong. Yeah. This is the one that is going to. Have mind all over the place. Okay. And I hope listeners also don't know this because I didn't know it until yesterday. Okay. And it, I'm, I'm, it's, my mind is still blowing in the wind. The boo box person. So the person who bet against Captain Hook, which, what a stupid bet to make because even if you win it, they're going to find out that the, the person will just like not pay you because they'll be like, I'll just go tell Captain Hook that you bet against them and then you're going to the boo box. And also just like the, the weakest willed person ever because he just like broke down and started crying. We, we easily just lie and be like, no, I didn't. Right. Pete, who is this actor? It's an actor. It's not a musician. Okay. It's an actor. Yeah. I mean, it look this this honestly looks like it could be an actress. Oh, so, this is a th- this person is a woman. Oh, look at look at me! Great job. Because there is so much makeup happening, and I I did realize wh- when it was happening, I was like, this person looks fake and like great eyes. Yeah. So this is an actress. Not the best. Technically, I could give this away. Should I? Are you? Give me a hand. Not the best actress. Meryl Streep. Nope. Think literally. I, I, if anyone's getting this clue, they're like, Deej, what a fucking clue. Not the best. Not the best. Never the best actress. Not the best actress. You are going to... You are going to... Is it is it um, Octavia Spencer? You're gonna blow my. She's hand always with the how, best supporting actress. Right. You're gonna blow my hand with how hard you high five it for what a good okay. clue this was. Tell me, Pete. Yes. Do you oh, recognize no. this person? Oh wow! Wow! It's Glenn, Glenn Close. Close. And the clue. Not the best actress. Whenever Glenn Close is in anything, people are like, this is the year <laughs> she has to win. Why? Because she hasn't won. And come on, she's Glenn Close. No, you have to be the best in that year. <laughs> right. It's not a fucking lifetime no achievement life right. award. No Shea Weber Norris's, okay? Did she win um, for uh, The Wife or whatever? No. No, she didn't. And, uh, it was, it was Olivia Colman, right? Yes, and yeah. we were both. <laughs> that so was happy. great for us because we were we were like strongly rooting for Liv. We did not want, even though she was she was good in it. She should have been nominated. Yeah, good, right? Yeah, that was but pretty good. What a what a weird cameo. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, I mean, Steven Spielberg. I feel like just flexes his his influence and his power. He's like, I'm gonna make you do dumb shit because I can because I'm Steven Steel Steven. Steelberg. Yeah, Steven Spielberg. Well, like the option. So unfortunately, there wasn't a, a, a pirate Captain Hook movie or a, a Peter Pan Captain Hook movie probably isn't going to have uh, a ton of women as main characters. Mm-hmm. So this 
cast certainly was not loaded with women, so it was kind of slim pickings mm-hmm. if Glenn Close was going to be in the the movie. She could have been. Oh, she would have been young, younger at that time. I was going to say she was could have been Wendy. Young but, Wendy. No. I mean, she probably could have been. Um, she could have been Peter's wife. wife. Yeah, yeah. Peter's Peter's wife, by the way. I just just things you don't know until you grow up and you watch this thing. Like when I was a kid, I wasn't like, "Wow, Peter's wife is gorgeous." Yeah, she's a babe. But Peter's yeah. wife in this movie was absolutely gorgeous. A uh, ton of uh, bullying and shaming. There's. Fat shaming like crazy. There where is, they are training uh, There is Peter. a legitimate fat shaming supercut. Yes. They, what, what do they say? The uh, movie you, just beca- Give yourself a heart attack? Yeah. This is a song they all know the words to. They are, uh, yeah, they, they have like their shaming songs down pat. They've been practicing. <laughs> yeah. They're like once Peter Wait gets until back we here. find a fat person. By the way, there's like a, a very chubby kid. Oh, yeah. As part of the, uh huh? Thud butt. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, why are they? Why are they bullying the hell out of Peter Pan when this kid's there? So there are there, there's some consistency issues there. Where also the food is imaginary, but it's not real unless you imagine it. Yeah. So at first you have I was to like, believe in it. Yeah, because I was like, if they're really not eating anything, then. How are some of them like really skinny, and so how are some of them bigger? And right. like Thud Butt obviously is like a chubby kid. How are are they asking about this? Or but then I was like, I think the food actually is real. You to just them, have to yeah. imagine it. Also, they imagine some gross foods. Yeah, like man, the it's cake like that's just Play-Doh. frosting. Yeah. It's just uh, pretty much everything is just frosting. Yeah, except for that crazy burger that Thud Butt takes down. That kid's the Good man. Good for him. Uh, yeah. Most obvious reveal in the world, by the way, when he gives him the sword at the end and he's choosing who's it going to go to. I'm like, well, it's got to be the guy who turned himself into a us... human bowling ball. Oh, that was sick. That was pretty pretty dope. But I was like, you Thud only butt. introduced us to two Flexible of these kids and you just killed one of them, <laughs> right. so it's probably going to be Thudbutt. Also, that was so uh, sweet when Thudbutt says his uh, happy thought is his mom. I was like, man. That holds up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I. One of the things that made me laugh out loud was uh, when they're on the plane and one of the kids just draws a fiery plane crash. Oh yeah! The, oh, Jack is an angry young boy. J- Jack has some some absolute heaters uh, on the plane. Oh yeah. Uh, and just a just a total menace throwing baseballs off of just random parts of the plane and like smashing the window. <laughs> What a wild card that kid is. I mean, and he knows so much. Do you know what, uh, do you know about uh, high yield debt? No. I don't either. Jack does? Jack does, apparently, because Peter says, uh, my word is my bond. He says, yeah, your junk bond. And then he throws the baseball up and the mask comes yeah. down and Peter, who's afraid of flying, has like a, a freak out. But... I just looked up now. I, I, again, another one of these things. I'm like, am, am I supposed to know what this yeah, means? Junk bond? Is junk bond a thing or is it like scug or these words that Rufio is throwing around when he's insulting him? So I just looked up, is a junk bond a thing? And it is. It's a junk bond is debt that has been given a low credit rating by a ratings agency below investment grade. How does Jack know about this? I mean, uh, Robin Williams is obsessed with his work. Maybe he's just throwing around these terms while on his phone 24 hours a day and Jack picks up on True. Um, and or maybe uh, let's do a little uh, fanfic. Okay. Maybe Spielberg, who I don't think wrote this script, but let's say he did. Uh, Spielberg's working on the script. He's coming up with all this stuff, making up all these words that don't make sense, and he's like, "Ugh, I have been going for like 14 hours straight, and this movie is due in a few hours. I gotta catch like 30 minutes of Shut Eye." You good to take over while I sleep? Yes, sir, says a young Aaron Sorkin. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to throw in some ridiculous dialogue. <laughs> and, like, the, the one thing Aaron Sorkin contributed is that Jack shoots back at his dad. <laughs> yeah, you junk bond. I yield debt. <laughs> that's a good theory. I like that theory. Did you know that? That's the, th- uh, that's the third installment of Let Me Blow Your Mind. Hell yeah. A young Aaron Sorkin wrote that line. <laughs> while Spielberg was asleep. <laughs> while, while, St- while Spielberg was grabbing a cat nap. <laughs> they're, in, 
It's, uh, for some reason, they're in like a college dorm or something. They've been like they've been put up by the studio <laughs> <laughs> to write this story. Hey, kid, if Spielberg we gotta, falls we gotta asleep, we got to shoot and... this scene tomorrow. <laughs> Sorkin just hijacks his computer that was left open. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, your junk bond, he says. A couple, uh, couple weird notes. Uh, wasn't a fan of the sexual tension between Peter and Wendy, who is like supposed to be his grandmother. We later find out like how that comes to be, but there's oh, a yeah. scene where they don't really explain it, and like they come like real close to kissing. Oh, when, when he first shows up? Yeah, ba- well, like uh, when she, when she like is trying to explain what's happening and oh. like how she got older and things like that. Oh, and then yeah, like yeah, they yeah. like lean in and they're like really close and it looks like they're gonna kiss. It was it was it was not explained why they would have that connection. So it led to believe that she's like essentially his mom. No, so th- th- that's a lot of. You just don't want to think about the logistics there because he was a lost boy, so he was very young. So he knew Wendy when she was young. They were the you, same. You age learn at some that point. later. Right. But like at oh, the point where the this moment. happens, yeah, 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 yeah. it was very weird. But then you can even still say still it's weird. kind of weird that he then like, grew ma- up to marry, marry her, her granddaughter. And like kissed her without consent while she was sleeping. Oh, right. That uh, was very weird. There's a little uh, stealing that or there's uh, yeah, there's some um, a modern thing that we like and have referenced that was stolen from this movie in the beginning. They're doing a big play, a big production about Captain Hook, and there wa- there's a song that's like, I don't ever want to be a man, which, oh my, I was- Relevant to the podcast. Send it, whatever they say. Ship it. I was, <laughs> oh, big time in. Uh, one of the lines is, uh, when it's time to be a man, we're not going to show up. And I was like, that is the original, I don't really want to do the work today. I don't really want to do the work today. I don't really want to do the work today. Uh, Another weird thing, uh, they just have a skate park in Neverland. Yeah. Super weird. Yeah. The, uh, the There's Midsommar vibes in this movie. Uh, where? Very quickly, there's like a couple of Midsommar moments. Uh, the flowers come to life when he's Oh, yeah, there, right. And they're like... They're they're like poking at him and everything, and I was like, I can't tell if this movie is Midsommar or the ruins. And then two minutes later, I knew it was Midsommar because they basically do uh, an atastupa with the slingshot. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. just put it there, yeah. like we're gonna teach you how to fly. We've made a giant <laughs> slingshot, and we're going to throw you off a cliff. <laughs> you but, have to believe. <laughs> <laughs> but into a into a pool of like pretty i don't know what like pudding or something like colorful oh, yeah, that's pudding. true yeah how do they make it they just like imagine sweet. that up real quick <laughs> yeah yeah that looked pretty fun um uh sleazy sleazy sleaze of the seven seas is a bar is that like a is that like a classic peter pan See, thing you never Hook? know with any of these things yeah i don't, I don't know. know if they i don't know if they made that up or if that's like a classic like uh captain hook's nickname or whatever but like the sleazy sleaze of the seven seas is one hell of a name yeah Let's talk about the war. Can we first talk about the suicide scene? That caught me off guard. What was the suicide scene? Captain Hook attempts suicide. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That was crazy. Yes. Out of nowhere. Yeah. He was just like, I don't want to live anymore. I'm going to kill myself. And he's like, comes very close to killing himself. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is the first time we've brought up Smee. Yeah. Smee, who does... Kind of like I was gonna say, does everything for Hook, but I feel like there's a lot of resentment. What do you do? Like, ah, oh, Smee, you stupid Smee, you're not doing enough. And I mean, Smee is busting his ass. He like he legitimately saves Captain Hook there. I forgot that scene existed. Yeah, uh, Smee, I think he's obviously on the ba- on the wrong side, but I think that I could, uh, I think I would trust Smee. Yeah, uh, he well, seems like a good Smee, dude who's kind of caught up with the wrong crowd. When you see Smee as the yard worker, whatever he is, at the end of the movie, you're like, yeah, I could see Smee doing that. Mm. Seems like a nice enough guy. And I like that when Peter sees him, he doesn't feel like I gotta attack this guy. I think you're right. I think that Smee. And please don't rewatch the movie and find something awful that Smee did and be like, so you're st- so you're sticking up for this. Like, look, Smee was one of the bad guys, mm-hmm. but. In different circumstances, I agree. I think Smee could have been one of the good guys. I think he's just like very. He might have been like a old uh, old Jack situation where Captain Hook kind of like took him under his wing and, and brainwashed him into yeah. thinking that like 
uh, you owe you owe me. Yeah, you, you owe like a lifetime of servitude to me. And he, I mean, let me tell you, he gets Jack very quickly. Yes, it does not take long. Well, Jack fucking hates. His right, dad. I mean, you're right. You're starting with a kid who does <laughs> right. not like his dad, and your end goal is, hey, like me more than your dad. Right. Uh, I do. I. It is ridiculous at the end when Jack is dressed like Captain Hook. He gets yeah. into that little suit too. It's also ridiculous that like he can't recognize his dad, who yeah. is just. I mean, I get the point of it where it's like he's a new person mm -hmm. and like he smiles a lot and all that, but like it's it's the old like Superman, uh, uh, whatever, like taking off the Clark Kent taking off the glasses. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Same guy, Would, you idiot. <laughs> here's a uh, a real American Ninja Warrior question: Would you have been able to touch their hands when he has to climb up and touch their hands? Captain Hook promises, just reach out and touch them, and you'll be able to, oh, yeah, yeah. to go home. Which we would learn over the course of the movie. Captain Hook is a big liar. Yeah. So he probably wasn't going to probably stick not. to that. Yeah. I would have bet against it. I just wouldn't have told anybody because yeah. I don't want to be. You don't want to doubt him. I, yeah. I don't, don't, don't want to no get too for you. close to that situation, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, do you think you would have been able to touch their hands? Uh, no, I have short arms. Nah, but but like, do you think you? I was thinking about. It, I was like, maybe if you propel yourself up on that pole, it's like you, you're very much risking just falling off of it. But as long as you're able to propel yourself up, you should be able to like, or, or I say like lift yourself up, then kind of you could push like your jump way off too, it. and like try to hang on to that that uh little um net. Yeah. That didn't that seem very uh, American doable. Ninja Warrior though? Yeah, They're like that's the thing where like you stumble doing it, but you always end up actually recovering doing it. Yeah, yeah. I think I actually uh, also that ki that fall is not going to kill you. Probably not. No. Unless wait, where was the boo box at the time? That's Did they right. leave the boo box out? That would be super embarrassing because he wanted a war badly. He didn't want to kill Peter Pan. He wanted to have like C Captain Hook is. My kind of villain, I'm realizing, because he's very uh, eccentric. I, I love eccentric, flamboyant villains, and, and Captain Hook is that. Yeah, and, he, and he's not really he's not really out to kill. He had a chance to kill a lot of people. He's more out to just have a good time. So keep himself busy. I did. Th that's a correct point because it didn't dawn on me until he kills Rufio that I was like, oh yeah, this guy like he's killed like he, two this people. Guy, yeah, but three I was people. like, but, but yeah, but also I was like. Oh yeah, this guy kills kids. Yeah, like what the hell's wrong with this dude? <laughs> like, I, it just seems like ah, oh, they're having this big production. You got the, like these clumsy pirates, and they like to march around, and they they walk with a limp, and they grunt at each other, and then like they friggin' murder children. Yeah, yeah, no good. No, no good. Out on Captain Hook and his uh, swashbuckling pirate friends. Although I do like the move. Given one of oh, those, you man. get that red carpet. carpet. That was that pretty is sick. Status. I mean, his 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 ship rules. <laughs> yeah, he's got that little. Uh, he's got like the little pond with like his his toy ships and stuff. Yeah, and then the bed just slides over it. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. I always, uh, whenever I'm at a, you ever see like a pirate ship, uh, at a tailgate. You know, like they'll they'll, they'll make like built a, into a into a stadium. If you go to a tailgate, someone will sometimes people will like turn like the back of their truck or something. They'll have like this kind of ship type thing. You know what I'm saying? No. They'll it, it, it's I don't know if they make it out of a trailer or what, but they'll make like this kind of like hangout zone where there will be there are like chairs and stuff, but they'll put like a flag and everything, and they'll kind of make it look. Oh like yeah, a ship. yeah, okay. Whenever I see that at a tailgate, and I've been to a tailgate in a million years, but um, I would like. If I were at like Country Fest or something, which I've, I'll, I'll admit I, I went to when I was way times. younger. Yeah, that was like the, that was like the you're the 20 party. years old, yeah. you want to go drink thing. Uh, I always want to be like, yo, how cool would it be? Because it's like mounted up pretty high to just like get some rope. And I don't, like I, I honestly don't know how pirates take over ships, but like, what if you were just like sitting there hanging out with your friends? You're on your little ship thing, and you see like. <laughs> Someone throws something overboard. And you're like, up. Oh, someone's climbing up, and like you and your boys, just like we're straight up your pirates. Like, get get off! Jacked. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just like you're hanging out. Leave in the, the back beer of the truck, and yeah. somebody throws a net over you. Yeah, right. Yeah, just something. Like, it would have to be like 
they, they'd have to know that like this Just there's no around. real Some serious goofing. threat yeah. but if someone did that to me i would think that was really funny that'd be very funny yeah uh <laughs> let's uh let's bring it back folks uh pirating tailgates <laughs> that would man that would be sick uh so the big twist in the war this is an unnecessary twist but they use it as a huge reveal you know what i'm talking about no the captain hook was bald the whole oh, time oh yeah wild yeah why are we supposed <laughs> to care about that? They, they they have this you know they, they do the uh i'm sure you've seen like the the world is six trillion years old or whatever it is it's like the world i don't know i mean it's like 500 years old and uh and you are lucky enough to live in it the same time as, as this thing david bowie yeah like they would always say that which i find funny because the same people that say that now would like find out about like the late 70s and be like oh david bowie <laughs> satan we're done with him we hate him uh but uh one of those things like i had one of those things watching it i was like the world is i don't know let's call it 80 years old uh the world is however many years old mm-hmm. and you were in it the same time robin williams and dustin hoffman had like a really long sword fight (laughs) (laughs) they have a that's up there for like great fight scenes because great fight scenes have to like go on a little too long and like there has to be like a it's like now you're just kind of playing with yourself right you're like how much longer is up things that you can do when your fucking captain hook movie is two hours and 24 minutes long absolutely (laughs) just let him just let him open it up just choreographed it to the nines Sorkin was just punching up all sorts of moves for them to bust out. Uh, that is a great fight scene, but then it ends with Hook's wig falling off and everyone not, being not like, falling off, just like being ripped off, exposed. Yeah. They were like, "Expose him!" Yeah, I'd be like, "Who cares, man?" You know, like you tried to kill my kids. I'm more. <laughs> yes. You literally just killed a child. Yeah, you just <laughs> killed a child, and that was like a good kid. He sure he tried to kill me, but. Clearly, he had a good heart. Like we were getting to him. Yeah. He and all the all those kids looked up to him. And again, he was a kid. Yeah. And you just m- murdered him. I was always so mad watching that scene as a kid because Rufio really just—it's like a soccer goalie. He just guesses wrong. Yeah. He goes like for some reason he thinks that Hook is gonna come over the top, so he goes he gives it one of these. Left himself exposed. Oh my god! That was like the most anyone's ever exposed, and not to speak ill of the dead, but that was the most anyone has ever exposed themselves in a fight. They were like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the the body if you want to go for that part. Just don't get three feet above my head." <laughs> uh, yeah, it was uh, tough to watch. Tough scene, <laughs> literally. Um, and then it ends with hook lies. He does a mea culpa, whatever it is. Not mea culpa. Well, what's the? There's a term for. I, I don't. We're so stupid. Uh, the term. It's. Uh, it sounds like epiphany, but it's not epiphany. Where you feign surrender. Uh, well, if screwing up epiphany is a big part of this movie as well. Why? Because oh, in the, the speech. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I. Fr- I don't know. I'm gonna look this up. Fake surrender word. Uh, perfidy. Perfidy. Not bad. That's pretty close. Not bad. So perfidy. Uh, he does the, yo, let me out of this. We're good. All right, you good. Gives him a pat on the back. Like, all right, just leave my kids alone. But I'm Captain Hook. And I'm, uh, and then he tries to kill him. Pulls a sword out of like his shoe or something. That, that was like a really dangerous plan to have. Like, if you have a. Something goes wrong and. Sh- sword for a guy who's already lost. Arm. For a guy who's already lost a hand. Yeah. A lot of hand jokes, by the way. A lot of them slapped, too. I don't get how Smee, how that was cool when Smee said that. What'd he say? He's like, give him a hand. He's only got one. Oh, yeah. Like, if I were Hook, well, I'd be he, like, yo, I can say that. You can't. But, he, I mean, Smee has been working on that routine for a little bit. He probably ran it by. Yeah. That's he's He sounds like he, he runs that out every single day. And it's very possible that Hook would be like, yo, go out and say this before I get on. Yeah. He's like Tenacious D when they have... The guy introducing them be like, this band is the greatest whatever it is. And give this thing, even though he's never heard of him. But uh, so Hook does that fake out. Then there's a weird thing where he hits the uh, 
the crocodile. Croc- Didn't get that. Well, they don't really do anything with crocodiles in this movie. Well, they say that the uh, that the the, the f- fed his hand to the crocodile or something after he cut it off. Oh, okay. So there was mention but, like, of you like you know that that like Hook doesn't f with crocodiles. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like the crocodile fell on him and then it, he just disappeared inside of it or something. So the clock comes. He hits the crocodile in the stomach. A bunch of like fog comes out he spits out of he spits the clock out of his mouth and then like starts to kind of walk and then falls over on him and then swallows him up and like burps and yeah. eats him and stuff so then all the kids run around to this enormous uh crocodile the only thing they know about this crocodile it is that it ate just a ate a human <laughs> And they're like, maybe it's full. What do we have here? Let's... <laughs> oh, it's got huge teeth too. And they're just like standing in it. And they, they just crocodile's say, full. It just had a, had its fill. A giant human. That's true. No need for children. And what do they say? Hook's gone. Be like, yeah, he just got eaten. <laughs> don't tell me you missed that. <laughs> we don't. What's the oh bangarang is the line? Yeah, bangarang is. Which... I think that that had to have been uh, a made up thing for this. I, I wish that. Uh, the, like the Neverland Times wrote one of those like here's what Fact Hook checking. yeah yeah, yeah. here's Fact what Hook, Hook got right and wrong about uh, Never Neverland and it was like Bangarang was a slang used briefly in the late 80s it would not have been used as much as they said it in 1991 and it was not anyone's catchphrase so no one would have responded that strongly to hearing Peter Pan say it uh, but What'd you think? I didn't realize this is uh, not a beloved movie by critics. No, not at all. Wildly pretty, popular and beloved movie, but just not by critics. Pretty, uh, pretty decent, uh, pretty decent brunch score. I think yeah. it was like twenty nine against fifty six or something. Was it fifty six? Was I, it low? I think it was not as high as I expected, um, but it was still a pretty significant gap between the uh, the critic score and the audience score. Okay, so we're looking at. 29 and 76. Yeah, that's low. Okay. That's low. I would think that that would be uh that would I would think the is it perhaps just like a cult classic where not everybody loves it but like the people that like it really really like it. I don't think so. I don't think I know of anyone who's like, yo, you know Hook sucks, right? I think that everyone's like yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it sucked. Like, Look, because like, it's like this grand thing yeah. and it's Robin Williams. It's it's one of those movies that I think we might appreciate more than other people yeah. because we like absurd things that we can talk about and sort of poke holes in. Mm-hmm. And there's, as you've realized, you've listened to us talk about Hook for like 40 minutes at this point. It's a lot to talk about. Good Hook conversation, you think, though? Yeah. Good Hook conversation, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll get you out of here on this. Uh, what's your relationship with Apple TV? Don't have one. Uh, do you, but do you like have it? No, I don't have a- Apple TV. No, that's I, what I mean. I don't think, I think everybody has Apple TV. I don't think so. I th- legitimately think they do. I want to watch the Billy Eilish doc the other day, which I did, and God bless anyone who has to, any kid who has to grow up in this era. I, I it made me, I, I, I wept legitimately really? for Billy Eilish. I felt so bad for her or any kid that has to live in this crazy world of internet judgment all this stuff like she she's got this horrible um she just got this horrible anxiety that's clearly just a result of being online of being online and like she's do, like certain vocal as she's recording her song she'll like stop phineas and be like no i, ca- I can't sing it that way like they'll they'll make fun of me if i oh, sing man. it like that and it's like yo like you're you're like so good. You're but you're one of the one. And people like know, you now, right? Yeah. Everybody likes you. It's there's, yeah. I, yeah. I, I seriously, I had freaking tears in my eyes. She does. Um, Is the documentary good though. Yes, I would recommend it. Okay. She does. Uh, she does Coachella, and she's so excited for it. Like her album had just come out. Everyone's hyping it up so much. Like this is like the Billie Eilish moment. She goes out. She kills it. Really, like it's hard not to kill it as a at a festival, especially when you have that big a production. 
Like there, there's a people pretty... are there to have a good time, right? And like especially if you're like, well, where'd she go? What part of the the like the billing was she higher up? I uh, she had to have been headlining. Okay, yeah. So then like everybody is, everybody's gonna oh, be, yeah. everybody's gonna love it. Like it's the end of the day. Everybody's kind of drunk. Yeah. Like, they're just there for the vibes. It's hard to fuck up like an end of end of festival right. headliner. And like one of the new songs that she had in one of the verses, she forgot the words. And I like I don't know, like you, you get that probably once every two or three concerts you go to. Someone forgets the words to one of their songs and they make a joke of it and whatever. And she did it too. She was like as she's singing, she's like, What are the fucking words to this <laughs> song? And then she gets it, she can and like she just owns it and she's great. And I don't think it's just because of that moment or whatever, but she goes out, has this great show, and then after she's completely inconsolable. Really? And I was just, yeah, that's like, crazy. I, but that's also like a human quality where even if you do a good job, and you just have so much excitement for something, or you're like you're amping yourself up, that afterwards, no matter what, I don't know, maybe I'm just a crazy bird, but like no matter what, afterwards you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like what oh my god like she, she's just so disgusted with herself and i was like man the people who are good at shit feel that way how the hell am i supposed to feel yeah i mean i think that that's like a I, it's pretty relatable like thing for both of us where it's like yeah. we often like finish something and we're like was that was that was that good Do we yeah. suck yeah so i don't know i mean like it and then you I also edit think, it back, and you're like, "It was the bomb." <laughs> I think that a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, Billie Eilish appeal is that she is like relatable in that sense, and that she has like a lot of human qualities. So yeah, she yeah that I don't sucks know. though. Maybe maybe it's like just like documentary uh, um, Stockholm syndrome or something. But like you watch it, and you're like, you know, she's like rude to her parents sometimes, and she can snap people. She's clearly overworked. This seems like a this seems like a good kid, and they've got all the talent in the world. So I'm really rooting for this person. And like Phineas, see, I, I'm just a Phineas fan. He seems like a really cool kid. There's a scene where they have to finish. Uh, it's the day the Grammy noms come out, and they have to finish the um, James Bond song they're doing. Mm-hmm. And they do everything. They just like carry around, like honestly, like kind of like our setup or whatever. They just like have a mic and an interface and a computer that either has like Pro Tools or Logic or something, and they'll just like record her vocals wherever they can find a quiet spot. And it's just like very, it's like all home recording type of stuff. So they they've got a concert to do. They they got the noms that morning and they're finishing up this song, like writing it line by That's line. That's crazy. Yeah. So they're sitting on the tour bus because the green room is like a little too noisy and she's recording line by line. And uh, after the concert, like they're sitting in the uh, green room and Phineas says, wow, we just got a bunch of Grammy nominations, uh, finished a James, uh, finished a song and played a concert. We really are millionaires. And I was like, that would sound so douchey. Yeah. If it weren't, like, if, if, if you were not rooting for the person saying that. That was line, stripped from a deleted scene from the Firefest documentary. Yeah, you'd be yeah. like, these people, who do they think they are? But oh, I, like, you, you watch this and you're like, these kids are so freaking overworked. Like, they're happy to be doing it, obviously. It's like what they love. But <laughs> I was like, man, you are the man for this. <laughs> and he, like, Billie Eilish, who's like, again, like, she upset throughout the movie, like, different highs and lows and everything she's like that is the that is fucking hilarious (laughs) we are millionaires and i don't know it's not not nice to see nice to see rich uh millionaire children spike the football every now and then so uh yeah that's that i watched that on apple tv i also started to watch ted lasso and if it's not good uh my life is over because everybody says it is the most delightful thing in the world I watched, I got five minutes into it. I had this big stupid smile on my face. And I was like, this is like, I don't even know why I'm smiling at this right now. This has to be some, we're going to find out this is some sort of hacking thing or like some like <laughs> brain washing. I, I, it has to be. I was like, I don't even know what's happening yet. And I'm smiling like an idiot. And I'm reading my mentions because I was like, hey, Ted, Ted Lasso, any good? And everybody, I shouldn't even ask. Everyone's like, I'll tell you what it is. It's delightful. You will be happy the whole time. 
and I I'm I have had the blues hard lately. So I was like, okay, Ted, I'm gonna need fix it. Fix me. Uh, yeah, fix me, and I or like f- fix me or like ruin my life if you're not good. And I don't get it. I'm, it's about uh, English Premier League, by yep, the way. I Did know. not know that. Yeah, so. I think it was. I think it um uh started because yes. Jason Sudeikis was like doing a character yeah. for English Premier League uh, advertisements. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, we'll have a bonus episode uh, Friday? Friday. Friday. It's about uh, it's about unfortunate, embarrassing injuries that yes. we've suffered. Yes. Pathetic, embarrassing injuries. It's actually started, inspired by... Uh, Dylan. <laughs> inspired by our, uh, our guy Dylan from Circling Back, who, man, I, I love that guy. I, uh... Like, I don't know if he knows, like, we're friends yet, but, like, I've, I'm so locked into to that friendship. Man, he, he, he went on vacation this week. Yeah. That guy's a sex symbol. I'm just going to say it. Oh, totally. He already was. Yeah, but, like, he, he's throwing up Instagram pics from his vacation. Yeah. Uh, I, I checked out the, uh, the, the, the Wash Reddit. Having a good time with, oh, really? with his Instagram content. Simpin? <laughs> yes, quite a bit. Simpin slash Photoshopping. Oh, There's some good goodness. photoshopping going on. So Okay, so check out that Reddit at patreon.com slash listen to brunch. <laughs>